welcome back so let us see one final scenario of validating the sum of products before we discuss the part 2 of our framework till now we have discussed till configuration changes right so let's see that scenario in this lecture and then i will explain how to deal with screenshots on cypress dashboard and the remaining parts of our framework discussion right so let me quickly go to that checkout page by adding few products okay so basically you have to grab this value 65000 and 55000 and you need to sum so today there may be one product and tomorrow there may be five products so you should write a logic dynamically so that how many products are displayed it doesn't matter but it should get the value of each and every product price and then it should total it okay so if there are two products in this page right now it has to sum the total given by nokia edge and blackberry so that's the one scenario once we get the total finally we should compare if it's matching with the actual total okay so basically we need to write a locator which gives the all the total values so let me spy and if you do that and that's the way to actually start and get the text from these columns so you need the column of total completely so what object you write so that you get it so this is in strong right so obviously this one will also be in strong okay so tr and this is next row tr there are two rows so when you say tr and hit and enter all the rows will be highlighted but now we want to go to first second third fourth td if you give space and travel to td then all the columns are highlighted because tr td is a combination of every column but specifically you need to tell that i want to go to fourth column nth child of four i told you right in one of my lecture to actually get the index of fourth using css you have to use the syntax nth hyphen child now hit and enter so you got all these elements but you don't need total continue shopping and everything so in that case if you look the 65000 it's in the strong tag which is a child of the fourth td similarly if you look at this 5000 this is also on strong tag of the fourth child td and then you have to give strong okay so what i will do oh did we lose it that's fine i'll write it again tr td nth child of four what if i give strong space strong tag perfect you see that only these two are getting highlighted so this is how you have to come up allocator smartly so if your goal is to get all the prices of the product you should be able to write a locator which exactly filters you that specific amount so this is the amount now using this we will go back to our test so this should be somewhere before we click on checkout button, isn't it? So here the logic should come. Cy dot get. What happens? It pulls up all the values of that. Once you get the values, you know how to play the role of iterating through each and every value of that array. So Cypress given as a command called each, which will help us to do that. We were frequently using this in our test cases so by now you should be aware of how to deal with that okay so let me take that state framework right so every time it pulls up one value 
your dollar e l so whenever it pulls up value from each and every index i will try to get that text firstly okay let's start with this cy dot log and i'll run this test and let's see what items are logging so basically my idea here is to iterate through each and every product price and print it in the logs first our step is to extract it once we extract then we will implement the logic of summing up of all the product items okay we will go step by step let's not put all the code at a time save the project and then just keep an eye on how that behaves on your application look at here it got logged for us it says 50000 and 65000 okay so these two are the logging items but you see the format it's displayed with dollar dot fifty thousand and dollar dot sixty five thousand if you want to sum up in the future how did you you just cannot sum this right because this is in the complete string format so firstly you have to remove all this unnecessary dollar dot space and extract the pure number out of it okay then we have a provision to convert this string to the integer and then you can sum so that's an idea so right now this string cannot be converted into integer because of the special characters if you want to convert a string to integer first of all you have to make sure that string is clearly in number format so our goal now is to remove the dollar dot and space which is coming for our text okay so firstly if you use split method on your text basically this is your text right if you ask javascript to split based upon the white space so that means it will look for white space in your string so here is the white space right after dot so it splits the string into two parts one is before space what you have dollar dot and one is after space what you have which is 50,000 okay so let me show you actual text dot on this string apply split split is a method which actually splits so you have to give on what basis you have to split that string into two parts so i want to split that based upon the string sorry white space so white space is exactly coming before the number and if i split that based upon white space then it will be easy for me to grab so i just gave white space inside this and i will take that into a new variable called result nice so you can use either const or var it's up to you but if you want to reuse this variable and modify it again make sure you use var okay so because i want to reuse it here so now rest variable have two strings one is this one let me show you okay so this is the actual string what you get here after split now rest result of zero in the zeroth index this value will get stored dollar dot In result of 1 50,000 will get stored so how come this stored because you are asking to split based upon the space right so basically they splitted this as a zeroth index and this as a first index so now we were interested in this not on the dollar dot our main aim of using split is to eliminate this part so we have successfully done that and we have collected our desired value in the rest of one index here so right now you might have some spaces before this so let's trim this so that it will remove all spaces rest one dot trim so that will remove any spaces if it have before or after 
and the accurate 50,000 value will now get be written. I'm storing back that in the same variable called res. Okay, so that's the reason I'm using return type of var because I want to reuse it. If you don't want to reuse it, just use const keyword. I don't want to create multiple variables here. So that's the reason I'm re reusing it. Okay, perfect. And now I will try to, oh, where I'm writing all this? It should be here, right? Come on, we messed up. So this is the actual file. So I'll write it here and I can delete now this particular log step. So let me log now the actual result after we do processing on that by removing extra characters and trim. And now if I run this test, I should be able to see the clear number so that it will help me in the future to sum up with all the product items, okay? All right, so we are in this step and element is not defined. Oh, so when we messed up, we have changed that value as well. So let's pull it back. And I think now it looks good you can actually give new variable because we are already using actual text, right? Let's not collide. So here I would say that as amount and once we get amount, then we are splitting it and then we were actually processing it to get clear cut value. Okay, now look at here, you got clean values like 50,000 and 65,000, okay. Goal one is done. We were able to get the actual number. Now it's time for us to sum it up. How do you implement sum logic into this? It's very simple. Firstly, create one variable where sum equals to zero. Initialize the variable with zero. And once you get the result, first item, which is 50,000, you can say sum equals to sum plus result, okay? So when the loop ran for first time, 50,000 will be here in the result variable and sum equals to zero. Zero plus 50,000, sum is 50,000 on the first row. When the loop iterate for second time, it pulls up 65,000. And the rest variable right now in the second loop is 65,000. 65,000 plus sum. Sum we have updated to 50,000 in the previous iteration, right? So that 50,000 plus latest 60,000 will be total of 1100,000. Okay, whatever sum. Okay, so this is how you need to write the logic. It's very simple. Just declare some variable to zero and add that every new amount whatever you get to your previous sum okay and this is one of the famous interview question as well like how do you sum the numbers in array no matter what automation tool you mastered in you should be also able to answer some programming questions if you want to crack uh, SDR jobs so there are some questions like sum up the integers sort the integers so there are some basic questions which are commonly asked in any interviews. So you should be prepared for that as well. So there will be one round which focus on, which will be focused on all these technical tools. And at the same time, there will be one round on checking your basic programming skills. Okay. All right. But will this work? I know we have written correct logic in summing up the values, but do you think will this work? Just let's try to run and see and we will understand obviously test will fail and you should know the reason why this fail. Okay. So I will run this test and see what happens. 
look at here it's not summing up it simply prints the total value is zero why because here you javascript treating your variable whatever it stored in the result as a string how can you sum string to a number okay you cannot sum string plus integer right you have to explicitly tell to your javascript that whatever value you receive treat it as an a value so that javascript can sum it if you ask to sum two strings technically it's not possible okay so that this step will be invalid and finally you will get only zero what you have initially given line number 38 look at here okay so then now how to tell and give knowledge to javascript that this variable is a number but not string we'll see that in our next lecture thank you